For some of you out there, you'll know I'm a hardcore competitive gamer, and indeed I really love Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now this ties in well with today's sponsor, which is Predator. They're the official supplier for the Intel Extreme Masters of PC, laptops and monitors. Now today we'll be looking at the Helios 300 laptop. I'll be giving you a detailed overview of it, and furthermore sharing you my settings, and yes, you guessed it, we'll be also jumping into some CSGO gameplay as well. Now to kick things off, I want to talk about the specifications within the laptop, and of course this will vary depending on where you live and what's currently available. But in the model that I have, I've got a 11th generation Intel Core i7 11800H. This has a boost clock of 4.6 GHz and it runs on 8 cores and 16 threads. As for RAM, I've got 16 GB which run on dual channel, so therefore two memory slots, and it runs on DDR4 3200MHz. Now as for the GPU, it's got an NVIDIA RTX 3070 laptop edition with 8GB of VRAM. The stock clock is 1110MHz, while the boost clock sits at 1560MHz. Now as for the display, my model has got a 17.3 inch IPS panel that runs 1440p at 165Hz. I noted a peak brightness of 260 nits and a minimum of 17 nits. Here you'll be also able to see that it has a wide colour gamut, surpassing the sRGB standard and going into the Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 modes as well. Elsewhere, contrast ratio was tested at 1144 to 1. Elsewhere, the laptop has the ability to be fitted with up to 2 terabytes of NVMe SSD storage, and as a result it means from booting up the laptop to booting up a game, it's absolutely blistering fast. Now moving on we get onto cooling, and here the Predator Helios 300 laptop has got the 5th generation Aeroblade design, which uses 89 blades to be more specific. It also has got a liquid metal thermal contact solution, which also allows it to run at a lowered temperature, at least over a prolonged amount of time. Speaking of which, here's how the laptop sounds in its different fan configurations, which you can select via the Predator Sense program. Now moving on to ports, the laptop has got a singular USB Type-C input slash output because it's got support for Thunderbolt 4 and also can supply a display with a signal. Furthermore, you've got a singular USB Type-A port which runs on the 3.2 Gen 1 configuration and then you've got two USB Type-A ports which run on the 3.2 Gen 2 configuration which give you increased bandwidth. On that note, the laptop has got a singular HDMI 2.1 port and a mini DisplayPort 1.4 port which makes it quite handy if you want to output to a secondary external monitor and you can even run up to 4K at 144Hz. Now as for connectivity, the laptop has got the Intel Killer E2600 Ethernet controller which has two 2.5G support and the Wi-Fi 6AX 1675i which supports the Wi-Fi 6E frequency band. Elsewhere you've of course got Bluetooth which therefore means that you can connect over to Bluetooth headphones or earphones without any problems. Now of course the laptop has got a fully RGB backlit keyboard and a slightly off-center trackpad. I'll go into a little audio demo now for you to hear the keyboard for yourself and you'll also be able to hear the left and right click buttons of the trackpad. Now just above the keyboard there's a turbo button and when pressed it will activate a small little boost in terms of your CPU and GPU. Of course it will ramp up the fans as you might have heard as well. Now as for the power inlet it's found towards the rear of the laptop which I actually find pretty handy because it means it doesn't get in the way of peripherals. So for example if you've got an external monitor or a mouse connected it means that it's not going to get in the way. 
Furthermore, it can be concealed and indeed hidden due to the fact that the cable length that's included is pretty long, and as a result means you can have the power brick sitting down on the floor without it being on your desk. So with these specs out of the way, I would like to share a few of my settings. First off, you'll want to ensure that the display is indeed running at the correct resolution and refresh rate. Right clicking on your desktop and going into display, you'll find the resolution displayed over here, so in this case 1440p, and then if you go into the advanced display settings, you can make sure that it's running at 165 hertz. If for example you don't see the option over here, you can go on to display adapter properties, that will give you another pop-up, you go on to monitor and go on to 165 hertz. Make sure this is applied and then press OK and then therefore you can ensure that your display and the refresh rate are running correctly. Speaking about this display, you'll want to right click on the desktop, go onto the Nvidia control panel after installing the drivers and furthermore install CSGO. Now you go onto the manage 3D settings tab and select uh, CSGO on terms of the drop down and then here you can manage the settings for CSGO. Now despite CSGO being a very CPU bound game, you might want to adjust a few of these settings. In my case, I choose the high performance NVIDIA processor in terms of the drop down, in terms of the processor used for this game. And as for the power management mode, I leave it on prefer maximum performance rather than the default normal. And as for vertical sync, I make sure that that's not running and therefore have it at off. Of course, CSGO has its own settings. Now there is another mode over here that I just do want to talk about and that's the low latency mode. Now here there is a set of articles out there on the net which show you the differences between on, off and ultra. In my case I found that there's no real benefit specifically in a CPU bound game such as CSGO so I actually leave this completely disabled. You can of course go via the global settings which will also run it at off but it's just something I thought to point out. On that note here are my recommended CSGO settings on the Predator Helios 300 laptop at least in my case with the Intel Core processor i7 with the RTX 3070 laptop GPU installed, these are what I found to result in the best sort of experience not only visually but also in terms of performance. Now moving swiftly on to the Predator Sense program, you'll see at the top right hand side a little audio waveform. We'll jump into this in a little bit more but I choose the music preset. Now if you go on the settings card, you want to disable the system boot animation and sound, at least in my opinion, and you want to enable the LCD overdrive. As for the temperature, it depends in terms of the units that you want to run. And as for the backlight off after 30 seconds, that's to do with the keyboard. In my case, I prefer to leave that disabled and therefore enjoy the RGB light of the keyboard. I leave sticky keys disabled and the windows and menu keys enabled, but again, that is completely subjective. Now through the home screen you can see the CPU and GPU and the system overall temperature. You can see the lighting profiles which you can quickly select from and also the different modes which I did reference before when it came to the fans. Now onto the lighting, here you will be able to see a static and a dynamic mode. There's four zones that you can customize which is pretty nice to see, but I suspect most people will run on dynamic mode like me and run on the wave mode. Now if you don't like the RGB lights you can completely disable them as well, so it's good to see that option is available there. Of course you've got that profile manager that I previously referenced. Now as for the mode here it just shows you the CPU frequency and the GPU clock when it is in use and furthermore over here you've got the different modes that is previously referenced in terms of the home section, quiet, default, extreme and turbo. Now as for the fan control here you can see again the RPM of both the CPU and the GPU which is quite handy to see and you've got the different fan speeds that you can select from. Now as for monitoring this gives you a little bit of an insight in terms of how the CPU and GPU have been running and you can also see in terms of the system as well. This can be quite handy if you want to be monitoring your laptop. Now as for game sync, it's not something that I enable, but you can do it if you so wish through this tab. And as for the app center, this is a quite little handy tool to go into certain settings. Speaking of which, the DTSX Ultra app is really handy, specifically when it comes to the overall audio quality with the internal speakers. You'll want to enable this, in other words, pressing on this button and getting that yellow sort of icon, and then going on to the music preset. At least to my ears, I found to be the best sort of overall sonic quality. Better still, you've got a graphic EQ, and here you'll probably want to enable it and customize it to your heart's content. As you can see here, I have adjusted it for what I find to be the best sort of sonic qualities, but of course yours might differ from mine depending on your own hearing profile and of course your own music taste. On that note, there is the DTS Sound Unbound app as well, which you can go through. And here if you go onto the headphone tab, you can configure your headphones. In other words, you can enable the DTS Headphone X and you'll get a little pop-up saying that it is enabled. 
You can configure this as well, in other words, having it disabled or indeed customized to a set of headphones. Or for example, if you've got a set headphones, you might want to search them over here because they might have a preset mode. You can then choose between the balance and spacious modes, but in my case, I preferred the balance mode because it gave you a better overall sonic reproduction. Now with all of that in mind, let's get onto the fun part, and that's for me playing some CSGO deathmatch. I just wanted to see how it would compare to my computer's setup, and here I was actually pleasantly surprised. Now you'll be able to see for yourself the results from the combination of the Intel Core i7 processor with combination with the RTX 3070 laptop GPU, and the net graph should give you an indication of the overall FPS that I was outputting. Regardless of the total FPS, I will say that the laptop's screen itself looked pretty good because it had a 1440p IPS panel running at 165Hz and had no issues whatsoever when it came to spotting enemies. Similarly, the overall fluidity at 165Hz over let's say 60Hz is definitely appreciated, specifically if you're playing a competitive game such as CSGO. Now I should mention that I always use a set of headphones when I'm gaming and in this respect it's great to see that the Predator Helios 300 laptop has got a 3.5mm jack therefore allowing you to also simultaneously plug in a headset and have a microphone input and of course a headphone output but for the purpose of testing I just wanted to see how the built-in speakers would perform and I was pleasantly surprised I was able to snap to people's heads because I was able to hear where people were spawning on CSGO deathmatch of course if we're playing a competitive game you'll be able to hear footsteps or for example smokes being thrown and therefore able to identify if you have a rush coming along on bomb site A or B or indeed if you are yourself going to be attacking a site and knowing where your enemies are positioned. So there we have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video overview and it's given you a bit of insight of the Predator Helios 300 laptop. I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below be it's the previous generation or the current generation Helios 300. Now yet again I'd like to thank Predator for actually sponsoring this video as it's greatly appreciated and of course to thank you guys the viewers for actually liking subscribing and hitting that bell notification all of which is greatly appreciated as such i've been totally dubbed and i'll hope to see you in the next one take care of yourselves and goodbye